guys, thanks for tuning in. My name is Gregson and welcome to Shifting Lanes. As you can see, I have the mismatched colored Project Volvo V70R in my garage and today I'm going to do a couple of things that have dri been driving me up a wall for this thing aesthetically. So let's get right into it. But before I get into it, I have a quick announcement. So, as you can plainly see, I am wearing a Team Dadwagon t-shirt. We are now selling Volvo V70R Team Dadwagon t-shirts on our Teespring account. If you want one, and I hope you do, because all of the money that goes towards these shirts goes towards the Project Volvo, uh, the BMW, and potentially Hanson's third entrant into this kind of rivalry scenario. But uh, if you want, go purchase one of these. Uh, we really appreciate it. It, uh, it helps us out tremendously. It helps us get uh, a little bit more cash for projects like this. So if you like this, please go buy one of these. But we also have these. Yes, we also have Shifting Lanes gear, also for sale on our Teespring account. If you like us, if you want to follow us, and support us just in general for these builds, for our site, for, uh, you know, follow us on Drive Tribe. Go there and purchase a Shifting Lanes branded hoodie, t-shirt. There's a bunch of different color options. Uh, there's blue, black, red, whatever. I made a whole bunch of them. So go check them out. And uh, if you want them, go ahead and purchase them. So thank you in advance if you want one and for your continued support. So without further ado, let's get to work on the Volvo. What am I doing today? Well, I'm doing a couple of things. I'm doing mostly aesthetic fixes. There's a lot of stuff in here that's kind of like a little janky. So uh, the first thing is these body side skirts. If you took a look at our first video, um, well actually incorrect, second video, well first and second video actually, uh, you saw that these, um, not really side skirts, these body plastic paneling here kind of are very worn and faded and weather beaten and whatever. So I've read uh, a bunch of places that if you take a heat gun to them, you can actually restore the black, deep black kind of finish to them. Essentially what's that, what that's doing is you're melting the plastic. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try that on a couple of areas to see how it works and then hit it with some uh, plastic trim restoring um, finish and see exactly what kind of finish we get. So let's first start with that. Then we're going to move on to um, some fog light grills, a couple of things inside, including a new armrest and a new gauge pod or a gauge gauges hood uh, that I sourced off a couple of you guys. So thank you for that. But let's first start outside and then we can work our way kind of inside. All right, so I'm going to keep the shifting lanes hoodie on because it's ridiculously cold outside. Like I said, it's the actually it's the beginning of February and yeah, it's like 20, 30 degrees outside, so I'm cold. But I have right here a just general, you know, performance tool heat gun. If you have one of these lying around, you can do this fix for free. Um, obviously, less the cost of this. I picked this up for about 20, 25 bucks. Uh, it has two speeds. So yeah, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to hit this piece of trim and give you a quick before and after. So let's see exactly how that turns out. Okay, so check this out. I've only been at this for about, I don't know, maybe three minutes? Uh, I know it was a time lapse, but look at the difference. That is unbelievable. Now, to kind of give you a real time of what this is looking like, for those that have never done this, uh, I'm gonna turn this gun on and you can kind of see it's really cold out, so that's why it's kind of taking a little bit longer than it should. If it was warmer out, the plastic would melt a little bit better and form a little bit better, but man, I can't believe the difference in just doing that. That is unreal. So, I mean, you can see, look at how weather beaten that is, and look at how new that looks. It's incredible. Now, one thing to note, you should never do this on the body. You should really remove these panels. This is a project car, so we're gonna restore this whole body. I mean, obviously, if you guys have been watching, you know that we had a small accident, and we had to replace the light, and the fender, and the hood, and we're gonna actually restore this whole car, and the whole body. So, this thing is gonna get stripped down. Um, you know, the OEM paint will be a little bit, um, sanded and everything so I'm not too worried about the finish of the paint exactly so 
But if you are and you have a really nice car, don't ever do this on your car. Take these off. Just take a trim removal piece, kind of remove them right here. Um, ooh, that's really warm still. <laughs> um, and kind of just pry these out. There's clips underneath. You're just going to want to take them off and then you can do it kind of, you know, just on your garage floor or wherever you have space uh, that won't be sensitive to heat. So let me turn this gun on and I can show you exactly how this is working. So you'll be able to see it's glowing orange and that's where the heat's coming from obviously from the heat gun. So you just hold it pretty close and look at that. It's just melting the plastic right away and making it black again and kind of restoring to finish a little bit and the story i mean obviously this is not new this is melting and everything like that I mean, this really isn't the best way to do it but you know for a really cheap kind of fix this is amazing so yeah that's that's incredible all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to finish off the rest of this bumper piece and then i'm going to get the rest of the car done so let's fast forward a little bit and give you uh, kind of an after shot and see what's up. All right, look at this. We have this side done and it looks amazing. That's just the heat. That's not even the trim restorer yet. So I also wanted to show you why you don't want to do this on your car. I'm not sure if it's going to come out on video, but right here, where's my finger? There it is. You can kind of see the OEM paint is buckling. So, again, I don't care. If you guys want your original paint, you need to remove these trim pieces. For us, like I said, we're restoring this car. We're gonna repaint it. It's not a big deal to us. So, that being said, I think that looks incredible. Now, panning right, you can see the difference between that and that. I mean, even just from back here, you can kind of see like the swirls in here but I'll get it up close in a second. So there's, there's the restored heat portion, and there's what it looks like otherwise. So you got this disgusting gray faded crap. So yeah, I'd say that's a success. That is awesome. I'm gonna do the rest of this off camera so I can get you guys the rest of the pieces that we are going to fix today. So let's move on to the next thing. You know what, actually, before we move on, what I wanted to do was check out what this Ultimate Black Plastic Restore is. This is something I just picked up from uh, Advanced Auto Parts or AutoZone or whatever. You, know, you can get it pretty much anywhere you have car parts. It's Meguiar's Ultimate Black Plastic Restore. I'm going to put some on here, and then I'm going to put some on the other pieces that I haven't heat soaked yet. So, let's go check that out and see how this stuff works. Alright, so I'm just using a paper towel. You can use a chamois cloth, you can use a uh, microfiber towel, you can use a wax piece. So let's just see how this restore helps shine it up and restore a little bit of this sh shine and uh, original look to it. You're just gonna wanna apply it liberally around where you're doing it. Again, I'm getting it on the paint. You should do this off of the paint to kind of see how it goes, and that is a quick wipe on. So, let's check out the difference. That is with, and that right over here is without. So, you're seeing a bit of a shine, and definitely a bit of restoration. So, let's go down to, actually, I think a really good one to check out would be this disgusting back bumper. So, that is probably one of the worst places on this entire car. I have a ton right here on this rag. Let's see what this stuff can do. I don't think it's gonna do anything to this sun-baked thing back here because all the black has kind of been removed and it's just not exactly up to spec. This is really for just kind of faded stuff, not this bad. But, I mean, you can see even that is, that's not bad. It's not coming out as great on camera, but you can kind of see the contrast here and here. Uh, so this stuff kind of works. You can see all that dirt and grime that's come off. But, yeah, it's not, it's not horrible, but it's definitely not the same as you would get with, you know, just heating it up and then using this. So, heating it up, using this, definitely a win so 
All right, let's move on to the next thing, and that is going to the front and getting some new fog light covers on the car to make it look a little bit more uniform. Okay, so next step of the process is removing these fog light covers. Basically, all you need to do is take some kind of trim removal tool. I took this big beefy bastard, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna pry open some of these clips that are in here, so you're gonna wanna get underneath. Again, if you want a trim removal tool that has a little bit more padding to it, you can use that. We're gonna not worry about the paint because we're gonna restore it, but get in there. And I've, re I've done this already for you, so basically you just wanna pop everything out, and you have a bunch of clips here, basically. So there's a couple here, one here, another here, a big one here, and another tiny one right here. So all of those clips kind of hold these things in place. You're gonna want to grab a new one. This I got from FCP Euro. Shout out to FCP Euro, you guys have been great to us along the way. And all you do is kind of just line the clips up and push it right in. So let's go ahead and do that. And this should fit right over the original fog light, like so. And that's in there nice and good, and that's it. That is a really quick fix. It looks a whole lot better than this old faded one. And I've already done the other side. So we finally have fog light housing on each side of this car. Sweet. This one was just pushed right in and it's perfectly flush. It might not look like it right now, but that's just a shadow right here. So uh, I can't get really get much lower with this camera right now, but yeah, so we're good. That's two things. Let's move inside and we've got two more things to fix for this actually. This is getting replaced because, again, if you saw in our first two videos, the stitching right here is totally cracked. So what I did was source a new one online that has no openings. It's all stitched up, it's perfectly aligned. So let's move inside and I can show you exactly what we can do to replace this. Just so you guys know I wasn't kidding, there's my Subaru, it's cold. I don't know if you can see, but it's snowing. Let's take a look at the garbage can because you can definitely see the flakes falling. It's cold outside. I do this for you guys. It's so cold. Okay, so we're inside now. Basically, how to remove this is quite simple. You take your trim removal tool and basically pry this plastic piece between the gauge cluster hood and the actual dash off. And basically, it's a couple of clips. There's a couple up top here, there's one in the middle, and there's a few on the bottom. That just releases that piece of plastic. The next thing you want to do is you want to find your torque screw set. So these are torque screws. Um, what I have on here on the trusty little screwdriver is a T25. So basically it's two torque screws and then this thing slides right out. That's it. It's nothing more complicated than that. It's quite easy. So let's go ahead and take this apart and install the new one and see if it fits properly. Okay, so you saw me struggling there a little bit. There's actually six bolts you need to get rid of. Two are right here in the front. There's two here in the gauge cluster, uh, as well as some plastic clips on the bottom. So you're gonna wanna take the gauge cluster out and then you can kind of get to the longer torque screws in the back if you have short screw set like I do. If you don't, I mean, you can use a drill. This is just a quick hand tool. Um, there's longer torque screws, uh, torque screw sets that you can use that have um, if you can see this, it's just a short piece. It's a much longer piece that you can kind of just get back there with a drill. So I'm gonna take the uh, gauge cluster out and then see what we can do about sliding this right out. Another pro tip, I'm kind of doing this as I go. <laughs> this whole thing comes off. So uh, there's just a couple of clips. It's just some uh, U-clips right here that go right behind here. So you can kind of just take this whole thing off and makes it a whole lot easier. And I didn't look that up because I'm an idiot. But now I can get to the gauge cluster and I'm wrong again. This is kind of the cool part about having a project car. Uh, there's actually eight torque screws. So there's two here, there's two here, and then there's two below. So once you get these four out, the whole gauge cluster can come out. Then you can get to the two behind. There may be more behind, but I'm not sure. So let's dive in. Let's get this gauge cluster out and let's see uh, about finally getting this hood off. Okay, moment of truth. I have all eight and it was confirmed there are eight torque screws. Two here, 
four for the instrument cluster and two in the back of this hood. And it just comes right off. Now you can see it is totally separated right here, but our new hood does not have separation. So I'm gonna go ahead and reverse everything I just did and put it all back together and we'll see how it looks. All right, we're, we are finished. Let's check out the finished product. Nothing was broken, thank God. Uh, it looks pretty, pretty dang good, I gotta say. Um, up here we have no brake, which is great, so I love that. Uh, the fit and finish isn't great because, I mean, the part that I got here, it's a little separated, and we may have to fix that. Um, the leather, it looks like it's kind of shrunk, and we can't really, pull it um, but the top looks a lot better and there's less chance of you seeing this because behind the steering wheel you're not really seeing it than this and I think it looks a lot better compared to that so yeah I'd say that's a win the next thing and the last thing is this armrest you can kind of see and again we showed this in other videos there's a giant divot right here so I have a new armrest in the back and I'm basically just gonna take this out it is not really that difficult to do right down here. Uh, it's pretty dark in here, um, but uh, what I'm gonna do is just replace, there's a torque screw here and a torque screw here. Um, let me chuck on the dome lights if I can. Uh, I'll do that, I'll get some light in here and then we will replace this armrest for you guys. All right, I did the unscrewing of the torque screws off camera just because uh, it's unscrewing of torque screws. You guys have already seen me do that today, and honestly, if you can't unscrew a screw, why are you watching a Project Car Build? So, yeah, it, the armrest is literally two. I mean, this is where your arm goes, here, here. Uh, the two torque screws are down here at the bottom, and as you can see, let's see if I can find it on camera, there is a giant crack underneath. It looks like someone put too much pressure on the outside when they were either getting out, and this is now cracked. So, quickly showing you what a normal one looks like. Here is a normal one, no crack in here, and no divot on the outside. So, again, I'm not going to really show you how to do it because it's just two screws and this just goes right on. So, I'm going to do this off camera and I'll show you the finished product again. All right, let's walk in here quickly, check out the finished product. Oh, so much better. It looks darker than it is. It is Nordcap blue. There's no divot right here. It looks fantastic. It fit perfectly. Awesome. Really, really good. And that was one of the most simple sets of fixes I think I've ever done. Um, one quick note though, the torque screws that I was using for this, as well as the cluster hood, um, those are much easier to get off with um, a drill. My drill just wasn't charged, that's why I was kind of just using a hand tool. And uh, it helps if you have magnetic drill bits to keep the torque screws from going down underneath here, which they can kind of drop behind. You may have seen, I was kind of like banging that. <laughs> the torque screw head fell out around here and went off of the um, screwdriver I was using. So yeah, a lot faster with a drill. Um, also the T25s that I was using up here that they have in the cluster, are the same as the ones in the armrest. So yeah, this is a crazy simple fix and that is pretty much it for the day. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. All right guys, that will do it for today. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And um, you know, comment below if you have done any of these fixes in a different way. You know, I wanna hear how you guys are doing these projects on these Volvos as well, or your own cars that are not Volvos that may be BMWs like we have for our M3 or anything else. So. We want to hear, that truck was really loud. We want to hear about your project car stories. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention, uh, down the side of this car, there were a ton of dings and dents. So what we did is we took it to a um, dent removal or dent repair shop uh, in Denville, New Jersey. It was, or it's called Denville Detail. Thank you so much for them, or thank you so much to them for helping us out with this. We did all four doors 
and the front fender that is not replaced. So um, these are pretty easy to do. These back fenders, uh, they're a little bit more difficult to get to, uh, so we did not do those, and these are in better shape than the doors. The reason being is because we have partnered with dipyourcar.com, and we are going to, before restoring all of this paint, like I said, kind of don't care about the OEM paint at this point, um, we are gonna dip this car a really, really cool color. They've sent us a full kit with uh, the spraying system, with all of that, uh, the, the dip involved, the car care. So it's gonna be kind of this temporary thing until we get the whole thing restored. That may not happen um, because we need budget for that. <laughs> so that may not happen until 2019. So we want this car to look really cool along with any of the manual swap and tuning that we do this year in 2018. Uh, to kind of go along with us bringing this car to its kind of original form in a sense. So yeah, stay tuned for that. That video should be coming in later February, March, hopefully when it's not snowing outside because I'm sure you guys can't see from this angle, but now it is actually heavily snowing outside. So I'm freezing, I'm gonna get back inside. Thanks again for watching. Uh, pick up one of these hoodies, pick up one of our team dad wagon shirts because, sorry Chad, Volvos are better than your stupid M3. Just, just facts, it's science. That's it for today. Um, I'm really glad about how these turned out. Thank you everyone that helped uh, bring these couple of fixes together. And um, yeah, I'm gonna use uh, my friend, we know uh, a guy named Tavarish. Uh, his hashtag is kind of wrench every day. And I'm a novice at this. I've never really kind of worked on a car before. This is my first ever project car, along with Shifty Lane's first ever project car, though Hanson and Chad have done other stuff. So. Um, you know, wrench every day in your cars because this was really easy and it made the car look a ton better. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. My name is Gregson and I will catch you later.